A fighting game's roster is arguably the best thing about it. Every character is bursting with personality and a playstyle all their own. In theory. This diversity is what makes finding your main character so much fun. Maybe you want a solid fighter with an answer to every situation. In that case, Ryu would be a great choice. Um, no way, the recent patch completely ruined Ryu. He's not even viable anymore. Capcom killed him. Um, okay. Maybe you want to play a sadist who's oozing with fan service. In that case, Juri might be a great choice for you. A character's personality and costume design can be equally appealing to the player. Um, have you even looked at the tier list? Juri is garbage tier. She's impossible to win with. Juri is only alive in Street Fighter 4. In Street Fighter 5, she's dead. Alright, that's twice now that you've interrupted me. Shut the f*** up. Fine, let's address the elephant in the room. Balancing a roster is important, especially since many members within the fighting game community obsess over it. If a character is deemed low tier, then many players will ignore them completely, regardless of their fun personality or awesome costume design. A bad character is doomed to be unpopular, both online and at the tournament scene. On the flip side, a character deemed top tier is guaranteed to be popular online and at tournaments, even if that character has a boring playstyle and a bland personality. So basically, if a character is bad, then no one wants to play them. But if a character is great, then everyone wants to play them. This is why balancing your roster is so important. If the fighters aren't balanced, then you're doomed to see the same characters over and over again. So let's discuss how to properly balance a fighting game roster. This is obviously just my opinion. I understand that balancing a roster is very, very hard. I just think most developers go about it the wrong way. Okay, let's get started. One recent way that developers have tried to balance the roster is by allowing pro players to beta test the game. Injustice 1 actually did this. However, I don't think this method is effective for two main reasons. The most obvious is the skill gap between pro players and regular players. Obviously, pro players are far more skilled than your typical gamer. Therefore, they don't reflect the majority of people that will actually be playing the game. The second big issue is that pro players obviously play to win. They have an immediate bias towards wanting the character to be strong rather than fair. And since their livelihood hinges on them being able to consistently win tournaments, who could honestly blame them? These two factors are why I think Injustice 1 was dominated by a handful of characters. These strong characters were being tested by players whose main goal was to win tournaments. They had no intention of balancing the roster. They just wanted strong characters. I think Tekken 7 did a much better job of approaching this. Instead of using pro players, they made the game openly playable in certain parts of the world. So it was basically a giant beta test for anyone who lived in those areas. And this testing went on for quite a while. So it allowed developers a long time to address the concerns of players and make adjustments accordingly. Another advantage of open betas like this is that players typically want their favorite characters buffed. Instead of wanting to win, they want all of their characters to be equally viable. Because of this, Namco got feedback for each individual character. However, this method of balancing wasn't without its flaws. As mentioned earlier, Tekken 7 was only playable in certain parts of the world. This obviously had many fans of the series feeling left out, since they literally had to settle for watching other people play the game. This caused the hype for Tekken 7 to slowly die off in many parts of the world, especially since it was tested for nearly two years before being released worldwide. Limiting the game like this also reduced the amount of player feedback, so while the roster for Tekken 7 was more balanced than most fighting games, it still had issues that likely would have been noticed if more players had access to the game. Now don't get me wrong, I think this method was a great idea, but limiting the game to a few countries likely led to the beta lasting so long, and this long testing phase likely killed the hype for many fans who just wanted to play the game. With those two examples in mind, I'd like to share how I think a fighting game roster should be balanced. Now since I've never designed a fighting game in my life, feel free to take my opinions with a grain of salt. All of these ideas are based around my observations as a fighting game enthusiast. To start things off, I strongly recommend an online beta that takes place worldwide. This would give the developers access to the biggest sample size possible. Also, make sure to create an online forum for your game and allow players to post their thoughts and opinions on it. I also recommend adding new characters as the beta goes on. This would keep the players interested and also encourage more feedback on the online forums. Lastly, I think it's important to have tournaments for this game at specific locations while the beta is still going on. Anyone could enter, but pro players are likely to win the top spots. Therefore, this would be the perfect way for developers to observe the game at a high level. But now comes the most important part taking all the information provided from both the beta and professional tournaments and using that same information to balance the roster effectively. How do you properly gauge which characters should be nerfed and which characters should be buffed? Here's my honest suggestion. If a character is winning too many tournaments, then they should be nerfed. On the same note, if a character is being overly represented by a bunch of different pro players, then that character should also be nerfed. In general, I think tournaments are the best way to determine which characters are too strong, whether they keep winning or simply if a majority of players are using them. I think both situations are a strong indication that those characters should be nerfed, especially since most fighting games are dominated by a handful of characters while the rest of the cast is lost in their shadow. Now on the flip side, I think the online beta is the best way to determine which characters should be buffed. 
If a character is barely being used online, that's likely because the character is too weak. Likewise, if certain characters are nowhere to be found on the leaderboards, then they most likely need a buff as well. If a character is barely played, or very low on the leaderboards, they're likely too weak. In summary, the tournament scene is the best way to gauge which characters are too strong, whereas the online beta is the best way to determine which characters are too weak. That's my honest opinion on how to balance the roster before the game comes out. Honestly though, this method still works post-release. Use the online leaderboards to determine which characters need buffs, and use the tournaments to determine which characters need nerfs. And make sure to address player concerns on the forums as well. Welp, that took over 10 hours to make. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like down below. It really does help out a lot. And while you're down there, go ahead and post a comment too. What methods would you use to balance the roster? If you want more videos like this one, please subscribe and hit the bell. That will notify you when I make a new video. And you really don't want to miss them because they're always awesome. I also sell t-shirts if you're interested. Every purchase helps this channel and you get to look good while doing it. If you want to support the channel more directly, then of course there's always Patreon. Make sure to come back next time and as always, stay underdogs!